welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This video tutorial is for the Minerva Tote by Bag Stuff Designs. This tote has a lot of features and as you can see is a really great size. But before we discuss that, there's just a couple of things that I wanted to go over. First of all, this tutorial is filmed like a sew along, so there's no parts that are sped up, no parts that are cut out. You see me do everything. However, there are parts where we sew doubles of things or more than one of something, and I show you how to do one. So for example, the handles, then I go off and pause the camera and I go off and I sew the second one. I just feel you don't need to see me repeat things that I've already shown you how to do once. It also helps with the length of the tutorial as well. So when we sew the handles, again, I show you how to do one, then I go off and I sew the other side. So for things like that, where there's more than one of them, I sew one on camera and one off. The other thing I wanted to mention is I don't show any rulers, cutting mats, pattern pieces, nothing on camera that's going to give away the pattern. And that's for the protection of the designer, but also because I filmed during testing. So if anything changes, it doesn't affect my tutorial. You'll need to have your pattern opened beside you or on the device you're following along with this video on so that you can know what measurements and the seam allowances and such are when we get to those steps. Other than that, you're ready to get sewing. You just have to grab all your supplies. So let's discuss some of the features of this bag before we get started. So as you can see, it's a fairly large tote. It would make a great size overnight bag, beach bag, gym bag, or if you're like me and you like really big purses, this is a great size for that. So on the front, we have these two zipper pockets, vertical zipper pockets that go in all the way to the side of the bag. So they are fully functional. The back is solid. There is no zippers or anything back there. However, if you want more pockets, you could repeat these zipper pockets and add them to the back of your bag as well. And then you really don't have a front or back of the bag if you're like me and you like lots of pockets. The top of the bag closes with a zipper, which is really nice, keeps all your valuables safe inside. Inside, we have this divided slit pocket here. And on the other side, we have a large zipper pocket. So anything you don't want loose in the bottom of your bag, it's great for putting that there. The handles are double sided. So you have one fabric on one side and one on the other. And the zipper is also finished off with this metal zipper end here. I walk you through all the steps of making this bag, including adding the bag feet on the bottom. Now, if you don't have bag feet, you don't have to add them. You can skip the bag feet. If you don't have rivets, I do talk to you about what to do instead of having, adding rivets so that if you don't have them, you don't feel like you, don't, you can't make this bag. They're not really there for structural purposes. They're just more decorative. So you can, I mean, they do help with strength, but you can skip these and I do talk to you about how to do that in the tutorial. Just like the bag feet, they do help keep the bag safe when you do put it down, but if you don't have any, you don't have to use them. So I walk you through all the steps of making this bag, including giving lots of tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started making our bag. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is important because it familiarizes you with the pattern and the construction of the bag so that as you're going through the steps, you know where pieces are going to go and you'll already know what's going to come next in the next step. So things make a little bit more sense for you. But also it lets you know what the different materials are that you can use. And oftentimes designers give different options for interfacings to use. So these are important bits of information that you do want to make note of before you begin. And it's important because oftentimes too, depending on the materials you're using, some pattern pieces may get cut differently. And also because interfacings that you use may be cut differently. So this is very important to make note of before you begin. For this bag, I'm going to be using a mix of quilting cotton and soft vinyl. As you can see, the soft vinyl scrunches up. It's like a quilting cotton that's interfaced with your woven interfacing. So it's still very thin and very domestic machine friendly. You will want to use materials and your thread and needle that you know work for your machine because everybody's machine's different. So you'll definitely want to choose materials that you know work best for your machine. So as I said, I'm using a quilting cotton and soft vinyl and my interfacing is foam. And I'm also using the interfacings that are given for the bottom of the bag and also for the main closure M pieces. The other thing I've done besides going ahead and cutting out all my pattern pieces and interfacing them, so if you haven't yet, you can go ahead and do that. 
But the other thing I've done is I've marked all my pattern pieces with what they are. So the letter that corresponds with it. So this is letter P, which are the zipper tabs. So I've labeled all my pattern pieces. So I know when I get to that step in the pattern, what pattern piece I need to grab. I've also gone ahead and made some markings on my pattern piece that need to be made. So for example, on piece O, I needed to draw a line down the center. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And you'll notice here that I did press it as well. That's just to save some time. But that's also not only to save time, but so that when we get to those steps, I don't have to stop and turn off the camera or pause the camera because I don't show any rulers, cutting mats, no pattern pieces. I give no measurements, no nothing. That's not only for the protection of the designer, but also because I often film during testing and sometimes measurements can change or placements of things can change. So if I'm giving you a measurement and it gets changed before the final pattern is released, that affects my tutorials. So this way here, not giving any of that information, my tutorial is not affected and you can just sew along. So with that being said, you will need to have your pattern open either beside you on another device or on the device you're watching this video on or have it printed beside you so that you can follow along and know what the measurements are. Even for your seam allowances, I don't give that either. So you'll want to have that open so that you can follow along with me to be able to complete this bag. So once you've chosen what materials you're going to use, you have went ahead and made some markings. Now I've made as many markings as I can, but there are some where I'm going to have to go off camera and I'm going to have to make those markings and then I'll come back. The other thing I'm not going to do is I will show you how to make one handle and then I'll go off camera and I'll complete the second handle and I'll come back and we will continue on. The reason for that is the tutorials can get quite lengthy if I'm showing you how to do things that are there's doubles of. So I just feel to help with the tutorial length. I don't need to have you sit there and watch me sew it a second time. So while I go off camera, that's where you can pause the video and you can go ahead and make your second one. And then when I come back or you unpause the video, we'll just pick right back up from where we were and continue with making the bag. The other thing I've done is I've gathered all my hardware and I've also cut all my zippers to length and I've labeled my zippers. So these ones I know what they're for, but I've labeled my zippers. So for example, this one is for the main closure. This one is for the lining zip and these two are for the exterior. You'll notice I don't have the zipper pulls on them yet. I'm not going to put them on and I'm going to explain that why in the next, well, when we get making the bag. But I have all the hardware I need here as well as any hardware on my little rack here, my little tool rack that I use. So I have everything I needed gathered. It's in this little zip bag. So I'm going to put this off to the side and I just do that just so everything stays together. I used to just clip my zippers together, but then sometimes they'd fall just like these little pieces. I clip them together because sometimes you lose one and then you can't find it. So I just find it helps keep me a little bit more organized. So now that we've discussed everything you need to do for prep work, it's time to get started making our bag. So if you haven't already, you'll want to go ahead and fuse your interfacing to your pattern pieces as directed in the pattern. There are some that need to be fused a little bit differently. So you will want to refer to the pattern for that. You can also go ahead and fuse the bottom G stabilizer to your G piece. So just like I've done here. So it's fused to the bottom. And I also have the markings for the purse feet. So we're going to install the purse feet now. And your purse feet may be different than mine, but either way, you do want to use the manufacturer's instructions for installing your purse feet. So I'm just going to grab my tools that I use for my purse feet. And there are ones that screw in. There's these ones here that you push the prongs out or in. All right, so all my little tools. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get one of the washers. It doesn't wanna come out of the bag, there we go. So grab one of the washers and I use the washers to make the marks for the slits for the prongs. So I center it. So I'm just marking the prongs, the slits for the prongs right now. That's what I'm doing. So 
So you just use the slits and you just trace them out just like that. So I have all of them marked and I'm using six here. Then I take my seam ripper and I carefully cut the slits that I made. Now I'm going to show you a trick and I know I've shown this in other videos, but just in case this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, say you're using the vinyl or quilting cotton, whatever material you're using, and you're just worried that you're going to push your seam ripper too far and you're going to cut these slits longer than you need to. So you see how I have these two marks here for the slits. I'm going to insert my pin right at the top of that first mark. So you can see it's in pushed into that first mark, so insert it there, and then I'm going to come out the other side at the top of the second mark on the other side, just like that. And the reason why I go there where these marks are, so out the tops, is because that's where it ends where I'm going to push my seam ripper, so I'm not going to have extra holes in my vinyl or my quilting cotton, whatever I'm using. So whenever, when I go to push my seam ripper up, you'll notice that the pin stops my seam ripper from going any further. So it acts as a guard to protect me from ripping this material any further than where that pin is. So I don't slip and go any further up. And that's just a little tip for if you're a little bit nervous about pushing too far. The other thing, if you're using a quilting cotton or a material that will fray over time, you'll want to add some seam sealant to it, so some fray stop or fray check, just to prevent it from fraying any further than it is, because it would be very disappointing to make this bag and then all of a sudden your holes that you cut rip further than what you originally had intended them to or continue to fray. Oops. Now we need to grab our little purse feet and all our prongs. And normally I would add a piece of extra in, uh, interfacing here, but because we're going through a heavy interfacing, I'm not too concerned about it. Now, another thing I like to do with these purse feet, this style that I'm using, oops, is I often like to add a little dab of glue inside just to really help make sure that those purse feet don't ever come out. And that's just something that I do, a little extra security. Sometimes I forget to do it, but I try to remember just to be extra safe. Push your purse feet prongs through those slits you made. Then you'll use your washer. You'll place it through the prongs. And then you can fold the prongs either in or out. So there's the out. But what I like to do is I actually like to fold them in so that it hugs my fabric. And that's why I use my pliers because it helps me get a grip on them to be able to push them. So just like that, so that it hugs my fabric. And again, the reason for that is it just hugs it. And I've had issues where, where I've pushed the prongs out and my purse feet have accidentally come out. So ever since I've started doing it this way, I just find that they just stay in and they've, they haven't fallen out. Then I take some tape and you can take some interfacing and you can also use interfacing over this, but I just use some duct tape and this is just from the dollar store. And I just put it over the prong and that's, to protect the material on the other that's going to be on the other side of this but also i find it just helps add that extra security to help hold this in so that's how you install the purse feet and you'll install them at the other remaining spots i'm going to go off camera and install the rest of the purse feet and then we'll come back and we will continue with making our bag so there's my purse feet all installed all six of them now Again, you don't have to apply the interfacing or the tape over it. This is just an extra step that I like to do that adds a little bit of extra security. And also with the glue inside the purse feet, sometimes I don't remember, but I'm trying to remember to do it every time now. It's just a little bit of extra security that I like to add. Just personal preference again, but you don't have to do that. You can just go ahead and install your purse feet. Once these are done, we'll put this to the side. The next step that is given in the pattern is to fuse your interfacing to your pattern piece M. And I'm just trying to find where mine are. 
They're right here. So I've fused it already, my interface, interfacing to pattern piece M. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and fuse those interfacings, the two pieces to the two main zipper closure end pieces. Once we've done that, we're going to move on to making our handles. So we need pieces O and N. So I have them here. So this is my N. I just wanna make sure this is my N and these are my O. So I'm going to start with this one because the process is the same for these, how we fold them. It's the same. Now, if you're using a vinyl for one and a quilting cotton for the other, or you can be using quilting cotton for both or vinyl for both, but say you're using quilting cotton for one. So for example, this one with quilting cotton, you can press it with an iron, but with your corks, faux leathers, anything like that, that you can't press with an iron, you won't be able to fold it in and then take it to your iron and press, obviously. So what you will want to do is mark the line down the entire length, down the center of all your handle pieces. So this is handle N. And if you're using a cork or faux leather or vinyl, you'll take some double-sided tape. And depending on the size of tape you have, I'm using a thick one, but you can place the double-sided tape on both sides of the line. I'm using a thicker double-sided tape, so I'm going to place it right down the center on top of that line I made. And then I'm going to fold those long edges in to the center. You can do this with cotton as well if you want, if you don't want to press your cotton. So now I'm folding those long edges into meat in the center. So right up to that center of mark that I made. And it's a little bit hard to see because the chalk is kind of covered by the tape, but I can just slightly see it. So I'm just pressing it into the center all the way down. Flip it to the other side and press the other side into the center. And I'm putting them right into the center so they're touching. Now I know you're probably thinking, how come in other tutorials I've said don't have them touch when we're making handles or straps? That's because we usually fold them again. <clears throat> Excuse me. We usually fold them again so that they're folded, so that the raw edges are all enclosed. We're not doing that with this one. We're making a double-sided handle, so we don't need to worry about that. That they can be touching here in the center. So now that I have this one pressed into the center, that's how it's gonna look. You're going to have your center crease on one side and nothing on the other. So that's the right side and then we have the wrong side of the strap. So I'm just gonna make sure that's really pressed down. Now with quilting cotton, what you can do is same thing, draw your line down the entire length of the strap. Then you'll fold the long edges in to meet the center and you'll fold it in and you'll press it all the way down with your iron. So you'll do one side pressing it all the way with your iron, then the other side pressing it with your iron. Now I like to take mine after I've pressed both sides in and I like to spritz it with a bit of water and then I repress it again. And I just find that that helps get a really nice press on both sides. It gives it a nice clean crisp press. You can use the steam on your iron. I don't use the steam on my iron, the steam setting. Maybe I should, but I don't. I just have a water bottle filled with water and a spray bottle, sorry, filled with water. And I just use that to spray any of my pattern pieces that I need to press really well. And I just use that and I just spritz it and away I go. And then I don't have to worry about constantly filling my iron because this water bottle is much bigger, so it holds more water. So once you have the two pieces pressed, so you'll have N and O pressed, and then you'll have the other N and O pressed, it's going to look like this. Now what we need to do is we need to take these and we need to place them together. So what you're going to do is you're going to have them so you're looking at the wrong side of piece O right now. And the wrong side, remember, is the side where the pieces were pressed into the center. 
I'm going to use some double-sided tape here and I'm going to place it down the center of handle O all the way down the center and the other nice thing is, is this holds this down to this center fold and I also trim any threads that may be sticking out. You'll notice I was doing that as I was talking to you. I was trimming threads down. That's just so I don't get any peekaboo threads later. Remove your paper backing. So now you have your handle like this. Now we need to take piece N and we need to place it on top of piece O. And we want to make sure the side that's going against this wrong side, it's going to be wrong side at the N. So you want to make sure those two folds are going to be in the center. So where we folded it in, those are going into the center. They're touching each other. And you're centering, oops, you're centering this N piece on O because you'll notice that N is wider than O. Or sorry, O is wider than N. So center it all the way down. And you can make adjustments too after you get it placed down if you find somewhere it's not quite centered enough. You can make adjustments after. Don't worry. Even with double sided tape, nothing's permanent. So I'm just adjusting, just making sure it's nicely centered all the way down. And it feels like it's not. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I sort of have to. Readjust because the quilting cotton isn't flat. And if you find once you get your vinyl pushed against your quilting cotton, if you find the vinyl is a bit too long, because sometimes, like me, or one of your pieces are a bit too long, sometimes I end up cutting one a little bit longer than I need to. That's okay, we can trim them down after. So I just want to make sure the quilting cotton is flat on the other side. So yeah, it's nice and flat. Now I'm just adjusting and I'm just making sure it's centered. Sorry, I know this part of the video is probably a bit boring and long, but just to make sure it's nice and centered and perfect, it is worth the time and the effort. All right, so now it's all nicely centered. So it'll look like this, and that's how you want it to look. Actually, I'm gonna try and find, it's hard to see because there you go, you can see it here. So you want it centered. So after we get it all centered and all pressed down, and again, my vinyl is a little bit longer. You'll see here, it's a little bit longer than the actual second part. So my N is slightly longer than my O, and that's okay. It's just the way I cut it. That's okay, we can trim it down to size after. Now we need to top stitch both long edges using the seam allowance in the pattern but we're top stitching the long edges from N. So this top piece here, the one that's thinner, that's the one we're going from. We're not going from this edge where the thicker one is on O, we're going from N here. So that's where we're going to top stitch. And that's why I was saying, if your thing isn't centered, your N isn't centered on O, go ahead and readjust until it's where you like it and until it's centered exactly how you want it to be. And then top stitch. So change your length to your top stitch length. Now because I'm using a soft vinyl here, I could get away with using my regular presser foot, but just in case I'm going to switch to my Teflon foot. So if you're using a faux leather or anything else like that, switch to your Teflon foot. And I've increased my stitch length for top stitching. Okay. 
And then I'm going to come back up because we're doing two rows of stitching down each side. So I'm coming back up to where I started and I'm going to top stitch again down that same side using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now I'm going to top stitch the second side. Back up to the top. I'm just going to clip these threads here while I'm here. And again, stitching that second row of stitches. Trim all your threads if you haven't already. And I'm going to trim up the vinyl so my end piece, so it's even with my O piece. And this side's not too bad. There we go. So from the one side, that's how it looks. And then from this side, you can see the stitching. So there's two rows of stitching on each side of N. And that's how your strap looks, or your handle, sorry. That's how it looks on the wrong side. And then that's how it looks on the right side. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to sew the second handle together. And then I'll come back and we will attach these to our bag. Now, one more thing before I go, if your handle is twisting, so mine has a little bit of a twist, but I think it's just from the way it's laying here on the table. But if yours has a little bit of twist and you've used a quilting cotton, what I like to do is, I've used a vinyl on one side, so I can't press on that side. But what I like to do is go on the quilting cotton side and take my iron and press it. So I'll leave my iron there for, you know, a couple of seconds, move it, press it, move it, press it and then I'll run my iron down and that helps flatten it out and I leave it where it is to cool so that as it's cooling it stays flat and it helps prevent the twisting and that's what I do with all my handles and straps that I've used quilting cotton on I just find that it helps get rid of any twisting if there is any even with starting and stopping on the same edges so normally what you would do is start on one side come down that same side when you come back up to start you don't turn around and go all the way back up you back stitch down here and then you come back up here and you restart up here but sometimes even doing that I still get a little bit of twisting with quilting cotton so that's what I do I repress it with my iron so that's just a little extra tip so I'm going to go off make my other handle and then I'll come back and we will continue on with attaching these to our bag so both my handles are now top stitched all the way down and I also did what I said how I like to press them so I've pressed them you'll notice they're nice and flat now no curling edges no nothing so I've given them a good press. The other thing I did was I made some marks for the next steps. So in the next steps now, we're going to attach these handles to our top A piece. So our exterior top A. So this is it here, one of them. This tape doesn't want to come off my fingers. And there's some measurements that we need to make for this pattern piece. So first you need to make a mark in the center. So you need to mark your center of your pattern piece. And then there's some marks that we need to make for where we're going to be placing the handle. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for what that measurement is. So I've already gone ahead and as I mentioned, I made those marks and I made them on the right side and on the wrong side of my pattern piece. So I have them on both sides just in case this rubbed off, I'll be able to see it on the other side. So once we have those markings made, we then need to take our handle and we need to place it at the mark. So from the center over, you're going to be making that mark. I'm going to show you on the darker side. So from the center over, so there's my center. You'll go over to the left, you'll make a mark, and then over to the right and make a mark. And you'll do that on the right side. 
Then you'll place your handle at that mark you made. So right at that mark. So this is my center over, center over, and my handle is right there. And I'm just gonna clip it and then I'll show you. So my handle goes to the outside of the mark I made. So not towards the center, but when I make that mark, I place it to the outside of the mark, not into the center. So there's my mark right here, and my handle is on that side of the mark. So there's my mark right there, handle. So I have it pinned in place. Now we need to make that mark on our handle. Like I said, I had already done. There's a mark from the bottom short edge of the handle up, and you can see my mark right here. So you'll want to make that mark before you attach it like I did here. You can do it now if you want, but you'll want to make that mark as well on both ends of the handles, on both handles so that you have that done now. And then once we have it clipped in place and it's ready to go, we just need to sew it. So that mark we made on the end of the handle is the mark where we're going to be sewing up to. So we're going to sew on top of that previous top stitching we made. So those marks, those lines we made with our top stitching, you're stitching right on top of them. So keep that stitch length that you use to top stitch your handles the same length. Don't change it. You're going to top stitch right on top of the first stitching. And then when you get to this mark you made here, you're going to turn and sew across that mark, then go down the other side on top of the top stitching, go across the bottom, up the other side of top stitching here, again, on under that line, so the same distance apart, so use the same measurement, the same seam allowance, you'll get two rows of stitching, and then back down the other side. And I'll show you how it looks on this one. And we're attaching it to panel A, exterior top A. So I'm starting right on top of my previous top stitching. Back stitch. And then I'm just going to go really slow to make sure I stay on top of that previous top stitching. Just take your time. Now, if when you come up here, you don't get right to that stitch line, reduce your stitch length so that you can get right to that stitch line. And then return your stitch length back to the length you used for top stitching. stitch across that stitch line, go right to your top stitching, and if it doesn't go right to your top stitching, again, reduce your stitch length or lift your presser foot up and you can just slightly move your fabric so that it goes to where it needs to. Now, if you're worried about pivoted stitches in the corners, what I like to do sometimes is, besides turning my hand wheel so it makes sure it catches the bobbin, I reduce my stitch length down to zero, I take one stitch in that corner, return my stitch length back to the length I was using, and then I turn that corner and I'll stitch down that other side. And I'm just taking my time, making sure I'm staying on top of that previous stitching. Now, I've got my presser foot up here. I'm going to cut these stitching, these long threads here, just so that they're out of my way. And at the bottom, I'm going to stitch across until I reach that previous stitching. And then stitching up the previous stitching. And again, take your time doing this. And I want to keep that same seam allowance I had when I top stitched my strap or my handle, sorry. So the same seam allowance between the two rows of stitching, you wanna keep that same seam allowance to come across when you come across the top here. And that may mean reducing your stitch length so that you can. And again, in that corner, I'm going to take that one stitch just to make sure. Again, the one stitch in the corner, and it may seem like this is taking a lot, but I promise it's worth it. 
and then I'm at the bottom and this is where I'm going to back stitch is along here along the bottom just because this is going to be stitched into the bag later you're not going to see that seam so that's how it looks when it's top stitched and you can see on this side how it looks because I did use a rainbow thread you can see I hope you can see that I'm trying to look on my computer but you can see how it looks when I stitched around so I kept the same stitch I stitched right on top of my previous stitches and I kept the same width here at the top as I did between my stitches and that's how that looks on the one side so now we need to repeat that process for the second side but making sure our handle isn't twisted so here's our handle I know my mark is right here so I want to bring this down and around to that mark as I did before to the outside of the mark clip it in place And I have that mark again on my handle so I know where to stop stitching when I get up to it. And then I'm going to start right on top of the previous stitches. That time I didn't have to adjust or anything, it just it's perfect. Take a stitch. I don't want angled stitches. Or turn your hand wheel to make sure it catches the bobbin. Sometimes even when I turn my hand wheel, it doesn't always catch and I still get an angled stitch. So I just like that extra stitch in the corner, locking it in. Just a bit too far away. And we're coming back down the last one here. And I'm going to back stitch. And I'm just going to trim all these threads. And there we have it. We have our handle attached. It's not twisted. We have it attached on both sides. Actually, you can see the stitching really well there. And when we stitched, again, we went up to that mark we made from the short edge of the handle. We went up to that mark, we stopped, and then we went back down and we stitched right on top of our previous stitches. So you can see there, hang on, I'm trying to see where the light is. So you can see there how it looks on the back side. Once that's done, we need to repeat those steps to then go ahead and re or to stitch, sorry, attach the second one to the second A. So I'm going to go off camera to do that because you don't need to sit and watch me stitch that all again. That takes long. And again, I don't want to make this tutorial any longer than it is. So I'm going to go and repeat that whole process for the second or remaining exterior top A and handle. So I'm going to go do that and then when I come back we will continue on. Now both my handles are attached to my exterior top A piece so that it looks like this. Both of them are attached. We can set these to the side. We're going to move on and we need our, just trying to get everything moved over, we need our P pieces. We need our exterior front middle left and our exterior front, I just want to make sure I'm calling it right, exterior front zipper pocket lining E pieces. So we have two of each of these. You have the left and the right. So we're going to start with the left side for now and two of our 
zipper tabs. These are P pieces. And one of our front zippers. Now remember in the beginning I said I didn't put my zipper pull on this yet and I'm not going to. However, if you're not fully comfortable with attaching a zipper pull later in the steps when everything's attached, please go ahead and put your zipper pull on now if it's not already on. I'm comfortable with putting it on after, so I just like it because it keeps the zipper nice and flat, nice and even. I don't have to worry about moving my pull out of the way as I'm sewing around it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first thing we need to do though is the open end. So that's going to be the top of your zipper. So the open end is where your zipper is when it's closed. That's the open end. When it's opened down here, you don't wanna sew that when you sew your zipper. So the open end is what opens as you're pulling the zipper down. So where the zipper pull is when it's closed, that's the end we're stitching right now. So just like that. Now we need to take two of our zipper tabs. So you're going to take one zipper tab and you're going to place it so it is right sides against the right side of the zipper. And I'm placing this on the same end where I just stitched. Flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side of the zipper and you're going to place the right side, so the pretty side of the zipper tab against the wrong side of the zipper. So you're creating a zipper sandwich between the two tabs. Line it up, pin it together. And I'm going to put some pins down here just to make sure that nothing shifts. So it'll look like this with your zipper in the middle of the two zipper tabs. You're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> now, if your seam allowance was still at your top stitch length, change that back to the length you use for constructing a bag. Trim all your threads. So it'll look like this. Then we're going to flip these tabs so that they are right sides out. So they're going to be wrong sides together. And if you've used quilting cotton for both sides, you can go ahead and take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm just going to finger press. And then we're going to top stitch along that tab. Cut your threads. And the next thing we need to do is trim these tabs so they're even with the sides of our zipper tape. And if you're not comfortable using your scissors for this and you'd rather use your ruler and rotary cutter to make sure you keep it nice and straight, you definitely can do that. So that's how it looks when it's done. You have it top stitched at the top. And I think I ran out of bobbin. No, I didn't run out of bobbin. It looked like I ran out of bobbin right in the nick of time, but I still have some left. And I do have another one wound just in case, so I don't have to stop the camera to go off and do that. So that's how that looks. Now I'm going to sew the remaining tabs to that remaining zipper. Excuse me. Just gonna grab a drink. Sorry about that. Okay. Need more coffee. So again, I'm going to sew that one end closed. And you can actually, if your zipper is already installed, you can sew both the ends closed if you want. Again, exterior zipper tab. Now in the pattern, 
it gives us to cut for all exterior. I decided to do different ones for the exterior and lining. You're not really gonna see the lining one, so it didn't really matter, but I wanted my exterior to be in my soft vinyl. So again, pretty sides against the right side of the zipper. Then the lining one is going to go right side of the tab against the wrong side of the zipper. Clip it together and then sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm trimming all my threads because, as I always say, I don't want any peekaboo threads. And then I use clips when I fold these so that they're wrong sides together just to help hold them. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of a sudden my voice is deciding to crack. And now I'm going to top stitch that just as I did the previous one. Trim those even with the zipper tape. And we have two zippers that look like this. Now I'm going to put one to the side for now because I only need one for the next steps. Now I'm going to take one of my front exterior pieces so it is going to be the exterior front, middle, left, B. That's the piece we're working on. And when you're working on it, you want to work on the inside edge. Because remember, when you look at the pattern, you know that there's the zippers in the middle. And then you have your middle piece here. So you want to be making sure you're working on the inside edge. So on this one, I'm working on the right hand edge. So take your middle exterior B, place it right sides up. Then you're going to place your zipper on top, matching that edge here and the top edge. So you're matching the right hand edge and the top edge with the zipper. And I'll show you what I mean once I get it all pinned. And again, I don't have my pull on, this is just a personal preference. I'm going to add my pull after I have this all stitched and I'll show you that. And that's just so that I don't have to worry about moving my pull out of the way. So I've matched the top edge of the zipper with the top edge of B and the side edge of the zipper with the side edge of B and it's on the right hand side. So you can see it here, I'm working on the right hand side because that's the side that the zipper needs to be on right now. <clears throat> now we're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, if you're using a top stitch length, return your length back to the length you use for stitching a bag together. And I'm going to switch to a zipper foot after this because it's just going to make the next steps easy. First I'll trim my thread. I'm going to switch to my zipper foot. I will put this foot back on when I'm done. Where is it? All right, so I have my zipper foot on. So now that zipper is attached to that side. So you see it's attached. Now we need to take the exterior front zipper pocket E piece and we need to place it so it is right sides down on top of the wrong side of the zipper. So right now your E and B are pretty sides touching with the zipper sandwiched in the middle. So make sure you line up that top edge. So I always pin at the top corner and then I'll pin up here just to help hold it straight.
and then I'll pin down the side edge. So I'll pin down at the bottom corner down here. So all my corners are going to be pinned together, or both my corners, there's only the two. Just like that. Now we need to sew this side edge here with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So make sure that everything is lined up nicely and use the seam allowance given in the pattern to sew that side edge. So that same edge we already basted to the first side. So when we basted the zipper to B, it's that same edge you're stitching. So that's how it looks when it's basted, or sorry, stitched to it, not basted. The first side was base stitched to it. Now we're going to flip these so that the panels are wrong sides together. And we're going to take this to our iron and give it a press. Now I've used a vinyl here at the top, so I can't actually take this to my iron and press it. So I'm just gonna finger press it. I do have a seam roller. I always forget to use it. It's really bad. I figure my hands are always with me. I can just press. Probably not good to do that with my hands when they're always sore, but I'm going to add some pins here. Or clips, sorry, they're not pins, they're clips. And then I'm just going to change, because I like top stitching with my regular foot. I just find I like how it looks better. I'm just going to quickly change from my zipper foot to my regular foot or my Teflon foot. And then we're going to top stitch down this edge here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Trim your threads. Return your stitch length. And that's how the one side looks so far with it stitched to the side. So remove these clips. Now I'm not going to trim that zipper tape just yet. However, if your pull is on, go ahead and trim your zipper tape so that it is even with the bottom edge here of your panel. But I'm not going to do that yet, that's just a personal preference, but with your zipper pull already on, go ahead and trim the zipper tape so it's even with the bottom edge. Next thing we need to do is flip this so that it's over to the lining side. So we're looking at the right side of E. We're going to bring this short edge here over to the zipper. So the side of the zipper that has nothing attached to it. We're bringing it over to that side and we're lining it up. So line up the top edge of the zipper with the top edge of the E and line up those side edges. So the zipper that has nothing attached to it yet is where you're bringing that over to. So it's gonna look like that, and I'm just going to put some pins or some clips here. Now we need to baste the top and bottom edges together, and we need to sew the side of the zipper to the panel. So we're going to baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Oops, did I run out of bobbin finally, or something just caught behind? just caught.
Now again, you're going to now stitch along the bottom. So we're going to stitch the bottom edges and the top edge of the pocket to the B piece. So I'm going to add some clips. Now again, my zipper pull is not attached yet, so I'm not going to stitch across just yet at the bottom of the zipper tape here. I'm going to wait, but I'm going to stitch all the way across the bottom and all the way across the top. If your zipper pull is attached, you can go ahead and stitch right across the bottom of that zipper tape as well. So we're basting this together. And I'm going to do it from this side up here, just so I can keep an eye on the pocket. your threads. And I ran out of bobbin. Look at that. I was waiting for it to happen. At least it was there and not in a seam. That was really important. Like top stitching or something. Not that it's the end of the world, but it's always better when it happens somewhere like that. Just going to trim up some threads off the sides here. Needs a little haircut. Just from the fraying. There we go. And that's how it looks. So right now we have a pocket. I'm not going to undo my zipper, but we have a pocket right now on the one side. So now we need to repeat those steps for the remaining pocket and remaining zipper. So here's my remaining zipper, my remaining pocket piece. So D and E. Now remember, we have to have them on the opposite sides because this is going to be the left and the right side of the bag. So we attached the zipper on this one to the right side. Now on D piece, we're going to attach it to the left side so that they're both in the middle of the bag when the bag is completed. So again, with your D piece right sides up, Place your zipper right sides down, lining up the top edge of the zipper with the top edge of D and the side edge of the zipper with the side edge of D. And I will need to switch back to my zipper foot, so I'll do that quickly. We're going to baste this in place. This is basted in place, trimming all my threads. Now we're going to take E and we're going to place E right sides down against the zipper, so the wrong sides of the zipper. So right now E and D are right sides together, so they're pretty sides touching, and that zipper is sandwiched in the middle. So we've made that zipper sandwich again. All this talk about sandwiches is making me hungry. So clip your corners, the bottom and the top edges. And then we're going to repeat that same process that we did for the first side and we're going to stitch this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So 
flip these so they are wrong sides together now. So you're looking at the right side. So take this to your iron if you want and give it a press with your iron. That's if you've used quilting cotton for this. If not, you can go ahead and just finger press it like I'm doing or use your seam roller. I like to add some clips just to help hold everything. And then we're going to top stitch along that zipper. Now I'm going to leave my top stitch length where it is, my stitching length where it is right now because we're going to, as we did previously, fold that zipper pocket over to meet the edge of the zipper that has nothing attached to it. So we're bringing this over. So right now I'm looking at the right side of E and I'm bringing it to meet this side edge of the zipper that has nothing attached to it at this moment. So lining up that top edge and the top corner, pin it in place. Pin it in place at the bottom and then add your clips the rest of the way. And then we're going to baste this to the edge of the zipper. And I'm just keeping it at that same length because I'm basting, it's not a structural seam. So it's okay to use a longer stitch length here. Basting stitches just hold things in place until you sew it after. Now we need to do the same thing. We need to sew the bottom and top edge of our pocket. So baste them together. threads. Ooh, there was a lot there. I think I had forgotten to trim some at one point. If you need to give your panel a haircut, mine's got some threads to get rid of. There we go. And that's how the second panel looks. So if you look when they're together right now, that's how they look. So you have the zippers to the inside of your panels. So that's what you want to make sure that you put it on D, you're putting it on the left side and on B, you're putting it on the right side. Now, what we need to do is we need to attach the middle center C piece. So I'm going to switch back again to a zipper foot and we need to grab piece C. And then just one of your panels, so we'll go with B right now, the left B, and we're going to place this again, so with our zipper, so the side that doesn't have panel B attached to it, the opposite side. So this side here, we're going to place C right sides down against the right side of the zipper, lining up the top edge and the side edge here. So line it up, pin it in place, And then what we'll do is we will stitch this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So stitch this all the way using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And that's why I switched to a zipper foot. Trim your threads. 
we'll push this over and then I'm going to again switch my foot really quick because I do need that Teflon foot to stitch on top of my vinyl. Pressing this with my fingers to give it a nice press and we're going to top stitch this edge where the zipper is, keeping everything flat, pressed towards, towards C, so away from the zipper. go that's how it's looking so far now we need to take front middle D and place it right sides together with C so I'm switching back to my zipper foot so here's D we're going to place it right sides together with this side of C that has nothing attached to it so again D is right side up C with B is going to be right sides down and I'm lining up this side edge with, of the zipper here that has nothing attached to it to the side edge of C that has nothing attached to it. Lining up the top edges. And there's a lot of stuff here. I don't want anything shifting on me, so I'm just adding a clip there at the top. And then I'm going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Back to my Teflon foot. Press this so that the panel seam allowance goes towards C again. Give it a press, and then we're going to top stitch this again along C beside the zipper. And again, the seam allowance is pressed towards C. You don't want it under your zipper. So that's how it looks right now and I know I don't have my zippers attached but I'm still not going to attach them because we need to measure this and I just like when my zippers aren't on it's nice and flat as you can see so we need to measure this panel it needs to be finished at a specific measurement that's given in the pattern so you'll want to make that check the measurement in the pattern make the marks for the center here so you'll find the center mark you'll measure from the center out and we'll trim this so that it's down to the measurement that we need. So I'm going to go do that, and then when I come back, I'm going to install my zippers. I'll show you how I do that really quick, and then we will continue on. So I've trimmed this panel up to the measurement that it should be for the width here. Now I need to add those zipper pulls. So I'm just going to show you how I do this really quick. And I do have a little tutorial on my YouTube channel for how I do this. So I will link that below in the description. But I just use my handy zipper helper. And it will be a bit tricky because you have all these panels attached right now. And there we go, one zipper is on. And now I'm going to attach the second zipper. So I just open it up a bit. And I'm just going to adjust this one, I think it needs to be a little bit straightened out a little bit there we 
go. And that's how that looks when I've got the zipper pulls on. So now I'm going to stitch across the bottom again. Just going to re-stitch just to make sure that those zipper pulls don't come off. There we are. I'm going to trim my zipper pulls or my zipper tapes at the bottom here so that they're even with the panel. And that's how that looks. Once we have our zipper pulls on and everything all stitched and trimmed up to the length that should be. So stitching at the bottom prevents your zipper from coming off, but you'll see there's one zipper pocket and there's the second zipper pocket in the center. So now what we need to do is we need to grab that top exterior A that we attach the handles to. And I'm just going to pull my zippers down so they're in the middle just because these, these are dangly pulls and I don't want them getting in the way of any stitching that I'm about to do in these next steps. Ooh, confetti, sewing confetti. So grab one of your A exterior top pieces with your handles attached and we're going to take this and we need to flip it so that exterior top A is right sides together with this completed exterior front middle piece. So place it right sides together, line up the corner over here, line up the side, line up your other corner over here. And I have center marks made, so I'm going to line up center marks as well, just to make sure that everything stays nicely lined up. And I'm going to put a bunch of clips. There we go, that's how it looks. So now we're going to sew this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And where there's bulk, if you are worried that your machine is going to have a hard time getting over the bulk, what you can do is use a humper jumper or a walking foot. Another thing that often helps is using a bigger needle. Helps you get through if you're worried about skip stitches. Again, if your zipper pull is dangly, I recommend zipping it down halfway so that it's not in the way and you don't accidentally hit it. It's just best to be safe. Trim your threads. That's how it's looking, oops, so far. Now we need to flip this panel and press the seams towards the middle. So towards the bottom here, we're going to press it, flip it over and press this down. Now it's going to seem a little bit wonky because there is some bulk here that we're competing with up here where these zippers are, but you can do it. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to hold it as I go. So stitch length to my top stitch length. Seam allowance is pressed down towards the front middle exterior. Taking my time, making sure everything is pressed down and flat. 
Again, I used vinyl, so I can't take this to my iron to press it. But if you used a quilting cotton for everything, you can take this to your iron and give it a really good press. Just making sure that seam allowance stays down towards the bottom. Just like that. Just take your time like I just did there. Trust me, it's worth it to take your time. And look how pretty that looks when it's all top stitched. It looks so nice. I love it. Such a cute bag already. Super cute. All right, so that panel is done for now. So this is going to be referred to as the exterior front in the next step. So whenever you hear me say exterior front, this is the piece I mean. Now we need to grab again that remaining A and the, I wanna make sure I call it the right name, exterior back middle F piece. And we're going to do the same thing to attach A, just like we did on the exterior front, we're going to do the same thing to attach it and then top stitch along that edge as well. So with exterior E right sides up, we're going to place exterior A right sides down. And you want it so that the handles again go down like that. So top edge aligned on E with the bottom edge of A. So pin at the corners and on the sides. I just want to make sure my microphone's still on is. I always worry about that. I don't want it cutting out. Line up all your center marks. I always make my center marks before I start any project just so that I'm not having to stop and make them. Sometimes I can't because we have construction that we have to do. So sometimes you can't make the center marks, but anything that I can make center marks on, I always do before I begin. So now we're going to base stitch this, or stitch this, not base stitch it, sorry. Stitch this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And the nice thing about this is we don't have a lot of that extra bulk because we don't have the zippers on this one. However, if you really wanted to make this a double-sided bag and have zippers on the front and on the back, you totally could add zipper pockets to the back. You would repeat the same process, cut all the same pieces out, and add it the same way, and then you would have the zippers on the front and the back of your bag. Again, press this so that the seam allowance goes down towards, what one is this, E? or not E, sorry, um, F. Sorry if I've called it E before, F. So pressing it, and then I'm going to go to my top stitch length and I'm going to top stitch along F. Making sure I'm keeping everything nice and flat. If you need to use a hump or jumper, or change to a walking foot to help stitch. Go ahead and do that. A combination of the longer stitch length and a bigger needle and a humper jumper is often very helpful to get over those bulky seams. For some reason, my threads keep getting tucked underneath. I'm just returning my stitch length back to the length I used for stitching, and that's how that looks right now. So now we have the exterior back and exterior front done. Now we need to finish our exterior. So we need to attach the exterior bottom to the exterior front and back pieces. So with the exterior bottom G piece right here, right sides up, we're going to place the exterior front, the bottom edge of the exterior front with one of the long edges of G. So what we're going to do is take 
the exterior front. And now that I'm done with the top edge, I'm going to push my zippers all the way up to the top so that they're not dangling down near the bottom here. So we're going to take this one here, the exterior front, and we're going to place it right sides together with G, lining up the long edges. So pretty sides touching, long edges aligned. And we'll sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. I don't have the middle marked here because I marked it on the interfacing, but this is nice and flat here. So now we're going to sew this edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And when you attach that interfacing to your pieces, it was attached so it was kept out of the seam allowance, helping reduce bulk, making it easier to sew. I love when patterns have bulk reduced and we don't have to worry about our machines struggling to get through if we're not sewing on industrial, so our domestic machines have an easier time when there's not as much bulk to sew through. Remove my clips that I have on the side. So I'm just going to roll up my sleeves. I'm starting to get a little warm from all the lights. So now we need to flip this and we need to press the seam allowance towards the G piece, so towards this bottom piece. So we need to press it this way. So you'll see my seam allowance here goes towards the G or towards G, not the G. And I'm just pressing it with my hands. So now we're going to top stitch along this seam on G. So keeping that seam allowance, you'll see it's going down towards G. Keeping that seam allowance pressed towards G, keeping it nice and flat. And just going to roll this up a bit. Oh, one of my threads is peeking out through here, so I'm just going to grab my scissors and pull it back through. One of the threads that was fraying. Trimming all my threads. There we go. So I got rid of that little peekaboo thread. So turning my stitch length back to the length I use for stitching. So now that's top stitched. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera. Yeah, you can. It's all top stitched. Now we need to take the exterior back piece and we need to repeat that same thing to attach it. So here's this piece here. We're going to take B or the back. So this was F with A attached and we're going to put it right sides down. So the long bottom edge of the back is going to be aligned with the long edge of G. Clip it in place. I'm just going to flip this, clip the corners, and I like to clip the sides just to make sure nothing shifts on me. And then I do that just to get it nice and flat. Now I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So sew along that long edge.
trim threads. Mine ended up getting weaved underneath. And again, you need to get that panel, the panel, the seam allowance pressed towards G. So press it down towards G. And you can take this to your iron if you want to press it if you're not using a material that can be pressed with an iron. Or if you're using a material, sorry, that can be pressed with an iron. So seam allowance going towards G. I'm going to make it a mess here on my table. These are going to go flying. I just know it, so I'm going to put them inside the little container. All right, so we have this big piece. It's going to feel a little bit awkward, but we can do it. Just keep this piece here that's going under the bed of your machine so that it's rolled. So I'm rolling it so that it can fit under the bed of my machine or through the bed of my machine. Turned my stitch length back to the length I use for tops for stitching, and there we go. We have both the exterior front and back attached. So now we need to attach the foam. And before we move on, this piece is going to be referred to as the exterior. So now we need to attach that foam. And I see a thread here that I missed. Just trimming it away. So now we need to attach our foam. And you'll have a big piece of foam that's going to look like this. So we're going to pin this to the wrong side. thought I just heard my phone, sorry. We're going to pin this to the wrong side of our exterior. Now the foam is bigger and that's what we want. We wanted it a bit bigger and we're going to trim it to length after. But I do have my foam marked with a uh, center mark. So I'm just going to make sure that I get those center marks lined up. And then we're going to clip it all the way around. Now if you have some basting spray and you want to use some basting spray, you can definitely use basting spray here. So I'm just pinning it all the way around, clipping it in place. And I'm not going to stay on camera to do this all because as you can see, you're just smoothing it out, making sure it's nice and taut. And then we're going to baste it in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all pinned and then I'm going to come back and we'll baste it together. That way there you just see how that's done just so that you're not missing every step. So I'm going to go and continue clipping this in place all the way around and I will use pins along this edge here, but I'm going to make sure I keep them within my seam allowance. So I'm going to go check what the seam allowance is when we go to sew the final bag together so that I don't have any holes later in my vinyl. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back. This will all be pinned and we'll stitch it together. So I have my panel, my exterior front and back and the bottom all pinned to my foam and I used some pins but I kept it here within the seam allowance so that the holes will be sealed off later when I stitch and somebody has decided to join us here finally. So now what we need to do is we need to baste the panels to our foam. So I'm just going to move Buddy over for a moment. Sorry baby. So we're going to baste our foam to our panels and you can use a long stitch length for this. Just make sure you keep your material tight. Poke myself with a pin. I'm going to put the sweater down so she'll lay on it. She likes to lay on my sweater here. So I keep this just in my sewing area now just for her to have her naps on while I work. 
on there. She'll lay on this. She'll have her little nap. Sorry about that. So I'm just basting this. I'm just following all the way around. Maybe she doesn't want to lay on it today. Oh, no, you can't come over here and chew on anything. Come over here. Go lay down. Lay down. I don't want her chewing on my thread. So I'm using the longest stitch length on my machine to baste this to my foam. And that way there, it's stitched, but I'm not taking as long to stitch it because it's a longer stitch length. So it goes a little bit faster. And because this is just a base stitch, this gets hidden in the seam allowances later, as I was mentioning previously with base stitching. This is just to hold the foam in place while we construct our bag. Oh, it keeps hitting you, eh? Keeps hitting you, eh? I just got poked with a pin again. I don't think she's gonna wanna stay up here for very long. And these pins, I'm moving them out of the way before I sew over them or even get near them so that I don't sew over them. Sometimes when I baste foam to an exterior panel like this, oftentimes I'll just switch to a white or a black thread just because it's going to be hidden in the seams and I always have lots of that color of thread. But I also have lots of this rainbow thread I'm using so I'm not too concerned. But generally I'll switch to those threads just for basting foam or any of my interfacings to my panels. And my foam is a little bit smaller on the one edge here, so I don't know if I'm catching it all along and that's okay. I'll use some double-sided tape if it doesn't catch it. It was just when I was cutting it wasn't very accurate. So I'm just following the shape of the bag to stitch this down. And I'm almost done. I'm coming around the last section here. So now we're going to just trim our foam so it's all trimmed up and I'm going to stand to do this. Do you want this? Do you want this? So you don't have to sit there. Come here. Come here. You don't have to sit there. I don't want you playing with that. So now I'm just trimming my foam. So I'm trimming it so that it's the same size as my panel. No, standing is better. It's better for a bird's eye view. And 
the nice thing about this is it's one continuous piece of foam. So we didn't have to baste foam anywhere else. We just had it one big piece. And there we go. Our foam is attached all the way around all the edges. Now return your stitch length back to the length you use for constructing your bags if you've changed it to a longer stitch length as I have. Another thing you can do is, oops, your tail's stuck on my thread, baby. Another thing you can do is you can also add rivets or Chicago screws to your handles here. So right here on your handles, we're gonna add, okay, she's going. We're gonna add rivets or Chicago screws. So right through here, sorry about the disturbance with her. I just don't want her chewing on threads and hitting my machine or getting her tail stuck underneath while I'm sewing. So right here, there's a measurement given for adding rivets or Chicago screws. So I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm going to go off camera because I need to use my ruler to make the measurement for it. But you'll make the measurement from the bottom here, from your bottom seam, where the seam is here, where A meets the exterior front, and you'll measure up and you'll install your rivet. So I'm going to go do that now and then I'll come back and we will then sew these together to create our exterior and then we'll move on and make our lining and then put our bag together and you know the rest. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and we will continue on. All right, so those rivets are all installed. And again, if you don't have rivets, you can use Chicago screws. Another option, if you don't have either of those, is to sew an X within the smaller rectangle that you have here. So where we're sewing or adding the rivets, you can sew an X in there going through the foam and through all the layers. And that'll just help add that extra strength and security as well to your handles. Another thing I did with my rivets was I did add that extra piece of interfacing to the back so that it has just that extra strength as well. If you have a little handmade label, you can add it now if you wish. So wherever you want to add it, you can go ahead and add it. I'm not going to because I like how this looks right now without it. So now what we're going to do is, and when you add it, you can add it anywhere you want. Just be mindful of where the bottom is if you're going to add it to the bottom and that there's pockets here. So you want to avoid going through the pockets. So maybe at the top or even on the back, you can add it. If you're adding it to the bottom, just remember that there is the bottom when we fold the bag and that you have pockets here. So if you do go through the bottom, you're going to be losing some of your pocket. So now what we need to do is fold our exterior in half, right sides together, matching the top edge. So I'm going to match up my top edge and all along here and I cut off, I think I had marks here for the centers and I cut those off too. Oh well. And I'm just going to leave my handles facing out for now just so that they stay out of the way. Then I'm going to pin the sides together. Now, where your bottom is, these bottom edges here, you want to line up where these bottom seams are, where they meet the front and back exterior. You wanna line them up so it looks like one continuous seam later when the bag is constructed. So add a pin there where those seams are. Pay special attention to that. So again, where these bottom seams are, where it meets the exterior front. So where G meets F or what was the F piece and where G meets your exterior front where your B, C and D pieces are. Pin it. And at the tops too, you'll want to line those up as well. I forgot to mention the top part as well. I'm just going to make sure the other side is nicely lined up which oddly enough it was. So you just want to make sure everything is all lined up so your top 
where top A meets the exterior front and back, make sure those seams line up here and where the bottom G meets exterior front and back. Again, return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching a bag together. And now we're going to stitch this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Starting at the top and just sew down the entire length. And this clip that's holding the side here, I'm just moving it out of the way so that my presser foot can still get by it, but it still held it in place. There we go. To the other side. So you'll see I sewed one side right now, so one side is completely sewn. Now I'm flipping to the other side. And there's that bottom seam that I want to make sure stays together. Or not bottom seam, the top seam, sorry. When I get to the bottom seam, I'll do the same thing. Keep my clip. There we go. Now we need to trim this seam allowance down. And I'm going to see if I can do this with my pinking shears. Sometimes it's a bit too much for my hands because it gets bulky. Nope, I did it. And I'm just trimming my seam allowances down on the sides. Oh, there we go. Oops, I just threw my scissors, my own scissors at myself. All right, now let's see what we need to do next. Now, I'm going to remove these clips. And if you haven't already, make a center mark on your bottom by folding it together and you'll find the center mark, which I already have that center mark made. I'm going to just make it a bit darker so you can see because I don't know if you could see that on the camera. With all the lights, I'm having a hard time seeing what my camera is showing. So I already had the center marks made. I made it all the way across the bottom. So when I fold this in half, I can see where my center marks are. So that center mark on your bottom is going to line up with the side seam. So take the side seam and open it up and then line up the side seam with the center mark on the bottom. And we're going to stitch this to make it a boxed bottom. Now I'm going to reach my hand in and I'm just going to flatten the fabrics out here to make sure they're nice and flat. And I'm going to add a clip along the side edges just to keep everything flat. So I don't want any puckers when I go to turn the bag out. So again, I'm going to show you again what I'm going to do. So open up my side seam, bring it so that it lines up, the center of that seam lines up with the center marking on the bottom. Reach my hand in and flatten the fabrics out. So I just reach my hand in and I run it, my finger, along the edge here. So from this corner over, I run it along. And then place a clip, sorry, place a clip and then clip the rest of the way. And all that does is that helps ensure that there's no puckering or anything that's going to happen there and the fabrics are nice and flat inside. Now I'm going to tr uh, trim this, 
sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure that seam allowance stays open when you're coming over it. That just helps with the bulk. So there's one side. And I'm not too concerned when it's inside here where the seams are, where the threads are and everything. I'm not super concerned if I don't trim those threads. Only when they're in seams where, you know, you're constructing the bag and they could potentially be seen, these are going to be inside. I just need to, I'm just making sure my seam is flat here where I'm going over it. I just want it to stay pressed open. And again, we're going to trim this seam allowance down. Now, if you want for extra security, you can go over this bottom seam here, which I might do just to add some extra strength there in those corners. And I'm not going to sew right on top of my previous stitching. I'm just going to go just beside it. Oops. So just beside it. And that's just offering some strength there. Especially in the bottom of the bag where, you know, we fill up our bags and all the weight is there. So I've just sewn that. I love the size of this bag. Oh my goodness. All right. So now that we have trimmed everything and we've sewn that extra seam, and you can also have done that too here if you wanted when you sewed the sides, and you still could. You could just go down as far as you could go and then backstitch. Now we need to turn this right sides out. This is like the moment where you actually get to see what the bag's going to sort of look like. And I'm going to trim these just a little bit more on the corner here, just to make sure that there's no bulk. Yeah, that's good. It was just that one corner had a bit of extra. Great size bag. This could fit my kitchen sink. Great size bag. This could be a really great gym bag, overnight bag. I'm just looking at the size. I like the size for a purse. Personally, I'd carry this around. So I'm just flattening because that's where our interfacing is at the bottom. So that'll help give you that nice rectangular bottom here too. So look at how nice that looks. Oh, just got to fix this edge. There you go. Look at how nice that looks. That you're already seeing how it's looking, how the bag is coming together. I'm just loving it. All right. So putting that to the side, enough admiring our bag for now. We can admire it from our peripheral vision. Now we're going to move on. And we need to work on our pocket, our lining zipper pocket. So for this, we need J, we need K pieces, and one lining. So first to start, I'm going to put the lining over to the side with the two K pieces. If you haven't already, you'll want to make the marks on your facing piece, your lining zipper pocket facing J piece using the measurements given in the pattern and you're drawing this rectangle just like I did. So you'll use the measurements, use your ruler and you'll be able to make that opening. So this is the opening after that we're going to put our zipper pocket in. Once you have that done, grab back your K pieces and then your lining zipper pocket zipper. Excuse me, I'm just going to take another drink. All right, then you're going to take one of your lining zipper pocket K pieces and you're going to place it so it's right sides up. So the pretty side is looking at you. 
take your zipper and you're going to place it so it is on top of the lining K piece right sides up. So you're seeing the right side of the zipper and the right side of your zipper pocket. And you're going to line this up so that the side edges match. So clip it at the side edges and then the top edge. Now, I often trim my zipper so it's a little bit longer than my panels. And that's just a personal preference. I like that extra wiggle room. So once you have it pinned across the top, we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I just have to look over my glasses as, to be able to see it because I'm using my readers to sew. So it's kind of funny, I have to look over the top of my glasses when I'm sewing and my computer's way over in the corner so it's hard to see. But without my glasses on, I can't see, so I need them on. I have a pair of glasses for sewing and then a pair of glasses that I wear every day, all day. And a pair for the sun. So that's how it looks with the zipper attached. Now we're going to press this zipper panel away from the zipper pocket. So press it away from the, the zipper, away from the panel, away from the zipper pocket. Why was that such a tongue twister for me? I don't know. Just like that so it's nice and flat. You can take it to your iron but I just don't want to get up as much up and down as much so I'm not going to my iron that's why I'm finger pressing. Now with the remaining lining zipper pocket K piece, am I calling it the right name? Lining zipper, yeah, lining zipper pocket K piece right side up you're going to take the one that we just attached the zipper to and place it right sides down so again you're looking at the right side of your zipper and you're seeing the wrong side of that pocket that was attached to the zipper. Make sure your side edges here are lined up. Line up the top edge. Pin it all the way across. And then again, we will sew that using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And when I approach my zipper, I do zip it out of the way for, so I don't stitch over it, but also because where the zipper is, it adds bulk into that seam. So you can't really get an even seam allowance with the zipper pull there. So you have to lift it up and move it out of the way. But also because where the zipper is, so say this is the pull, it pushes the material of the zipper tape over, which causes this little bump. So in order to keep it nice and straight, you want to zip it out of the way and that keeps your zipper tape nice and straight. I hope that little explanation makes sense. Even with a zipper foot, I still move it out of the way just to make sure I don't hit it and I get rid of that little bump. And I hear some jingles coming, so I have a feeling Buddy's coming back. There we go. All right, so I've pressed those panels nice and flat and we are instructed to do that. So right now, it looks like it's wrong, but I promise this is right. You're looking at the wrong side of the case and the right side of your zipper. Now we need to put this to the side for just a moment. We need to grab back this lining zipper pocket facing J. Hang on, lining zipper pocket facing J, yep. We need to grab this. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fold it in half so the wrong sides are touching. And the reason for that is we want to get this centered onto our lining panel. And my lining panel, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half, but this one is going to be folded right sides together. And that's so that when we put these on top of each other, I have the crease of the right side going towards the lining side. Now, 
in the pattern, there's a measurement for where we're going to place this lining zipper pocket facing from the top down. And I've already made that mark, but from the top down, you're going to make a mark. And as I said, I already made that mark. So I'm going to line this up. So the center crease I made on my zipper pocket facing with the center crease on my lining. And I'm going to line up the top edge of my facing with that mark I made. And then I'm going to add some pins. And it looks like mine is crooked, but I promise it's not. It's because I didn't really cut this panel very straight. It's inside a bag anyways. Nobody's really going to you know, look at that. So there it is, it's pinned in place. Now we need to sew along these lines we drew. And I like to use a little shorter stitch length for this, just so that you get really nice, crisp rectangle. I'll put my pins backwards. And by backwards, I usually like to pull them out as I'm sewing towards me. They're gonna be away from me. So back stitch it, start and stop. Now again, in these corners, same thing we did on the handles. I take that extra stitch. You can also turn your hand wheel so it catches the bobbin. I don't always find that helps me. This is just a great way to make sure it does actually catch in the corner. Corner, one stitch, pivot my fabric, and then snip your threads, put that off to the side. Now we need to grab our seam ripper and we need to cut a hole in the center here. So what you're going to do is you can mark a line down the center and then you can cut these going to into each corner. So I'm just going to draw it really quick. So say this was my center line here all the way down the center and I want to draw V's into each corner and it kind of looks like a Y actually when you hold it this way I always say it looks like a Y on each end but that's how you want it to look on each end so when you go to cut this you're going to cut down the center line until you get to the tip of the bottom of the or the V here or the bottom of the Y and then you'll cut at the angle following the angle of the V or the Y so start with your seam ripper. And that just starts your hole. Then you just continue cutting and then you cut into those corners. Now be careful when you're cutting into the corners not to cut your stitches. Don't panic if you accidentally do. I've done it numerous times. And I'll tell you a quick fix for that. Quick and easy fix. So say you've cut into the corner here at the top. And what happens when you cut that is your stitches come undone. So I can see now, I'm just gonna look and see if I cut mine. I didn't. Okay, so you've cut into this top corner here. You need, to re, you need to fix those stitches because it's just going to come all unraveled or unstitched. So what you do is go back over here, a little bit away from the corner, back stitch on top of the previous stitches, stitch on top of the previous stitches all the way to the corner, get to the corner, pivot, and you might wanna go just a wee bit beyond that corner, just enough to stay away from where you've cut because you've cut beyond that. So you wanna make sure you go a little bit beyond the corner, just that wee bit. So change your stitch length to an even smaller stitch length, then come down the side, then back to this corner, and then stitch again back over these stitches. Make sure over these stitches here, because what you're doing is, is you're locking in the previous stitches as well so they don't all unravel everywhere else. And then you'll back stitch again on top of these stitches 
and then you'll be done. And that's how you'll fix the corner. And I say, as I was saying, go beyond on the side edge here, just beyond a little bit, because when you've snipped, you've snipped a little bit further than where your original stitching was. So you wanna make sure you don't keep having that unravel. And another thing I sometimes do is I'll add some fray stop or fray check to these corners just to give some extra bit of security if I've cut a little bit too far. Now we need to take this facing and we need to push it through the opening. So I always finger press first like this. And then when I go to my iron, I actually iron this as well. I press it with my iron that way. And then we'll push this through. So I'm just showing you what I do. I push it through to the wrong side. And then once I get it through to the wrong side, I then press it all the way around all the way around the entire edge. And as I was mentioning before, I have a spray bottle. So I'll spray this with my water and then I'll press it with my iron and that gets it really nice and flat. Now, if you're using a material like cork, vinyl, faux leather, anything you can't press, when you turn it right sides out, what I like to do is take my turning tool and I like to run it along the seam like this, kind of helps push that seam out, get it pushed out as much as I can so it's nice and flat and then use some double-sided tape to help hold this down and hold it flat. So I'll add some double-sided tape to this seam right here. So this piece that we've sewn, I'll add double-sided tape. I'll push that down. I'll add double-sided tape to this side, and then I'll push my facing down on top of it. And that holds everything nice and flat and in place. So I'm gonna go press this with my iron, and then when I come back, we'll add our zipper pocket. Now that my pocket is uh, my pocket facing is pressed really flat, we're ready to add our zipper pocket that we built. So that is this piece here. We need to add this into our bag. So what you're going to do is place this so that the zipper is right sides up and we're going to add some double-sided tape to the edges. And that'll just help hold it in place while we sew it. So there we go, I have the double-sided tape along the long edges of the zipper. And now I'm going to center the zipper inside the zipper pocket opening. So my lining is going to be right sides up when I put this on top. And your zipper facing is the same length as your zipper. So you can center it that way as well. Yeah. I gotta stand up to do this. All right, so centering it. On the zipper. So now it looks like that. It's centered in the opening. I'm going to add some clips or some pins here just to help hold my pocket down for now. And up here, I'm going to place some clips just to keep this up as well because we need to sew around the opening of our pocket. So we're going to sew all around that opening that we have here. So all around this zipper opening, we're going to sew. So I'm returning my stitch length back to the length I usually use for stitching. And if you don't want back stitching on your panel here, what you can do is leave long thread tails and pull them through and tie them off in the back when we're done. I'm just going to adjust this a wee little bit. 
just seems to be off up here. So yes, you can leave long thread tails and tie them off in the back if you want. I'm just back stitching. And again, with that zipper pull, moving it out of the way. I'm just going to take an extra stitch there in the corner just to make sure caught. I'm going to remove these pins. It keeps poking me. I'm almost done. Stitch down the other end. And then back stitch when we get back to the beginning. Remove these clips at the top. And that's how it looks. I've stitched all the way around that box. Now flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side of the lining and bring the pocket that was at the top down. So I'm going to pin these together along the sides. And then you have the bottom pocket here that's longer. We're going to use this top shorter one as a guide to trim the bottom one. And if you want, you can take this to your ruler and cutting mat and you can use your rotary cutter to cut this. I'm just cutting with my scissors to cut the excess off the bottom of that pocket. Now we need to fold these bottom edges to the wrong sides and press. Now there's a measurement that you need to use to fold it up. So I'm going to go make that mark and then I'm going to fold these bottom edges up and then I'm going to press it with my iron at that mark that I make. So I'm going to go off camera so I can make those marks and then I'll come back and my bottom of my pocket will be pressed up. So those bottoms are now pressed up and that's the bottom of my pocket because we're leaving this open to be able to birth the bag through later. So now I'm going to sew the sides of my pocket. Make sure you move your lining panel out of the way. We're only sewing through the pockets and you're using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Sewing the second side. I'm going to trim my threads, and I'm more like concerned with the one side not up here because that's not going to be seen because it's inside the lining of the bag and then I just adjust my zipper and we have the opening at the bottom of the lining. I'm going to leave this open halfway because we do need that open later for when we turn our bag right sides out. Put that panel to the side for now. Grab your pattern piece, what is this, L, and your remaining lining piece, I'm just going to leave it over there for now because we're not working on that yet. We don't need it yet. So with your lining piece L, your slip pocket, so it's your slip, lining slip pocket piece L, wrong sides up. There's a measurement from the bottom edge that you need to make from the bottom and top edges down. And you need to make a line all the way across and you're going to fold these panels to the wrong side and press. So again, I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to go press that, and then I'll come back and we will continue with creating this slip pocket. So I've pressed those edges 
using the measurement given in the pattern. Now we need to take this and place it so it is right sides up and we're going to fold this in half so they are right sides together. So we're going to pin the sides, matching the top edges first, and then we'll pin along the sides. And then we're going to sew the side edges of the pocket. So we're going to sew along the side edges, leaving the top folded edges unsewn, and we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And sew the second side. Just trimming the corners. This just helps reduce the bulk. And while I did that, I trimmed the threads at the top. Now we're going to take this and turn this right sides out. And we have to go back to our iron and press it. This is where there's a lot of getting up and down. We have to take this back to our iron and give it another really good press. But first, I'm just going to run my turning tool up the seams here. Just like that. I just find it helps poke out those seams a little bit better. And then I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press the edges. And then when we come back, we'll top stitch along both the bottom and top edge here. So I'm going to go do that. and. Before I come back, there's also some marks after you press it that you need to make from the center line out. So you'll want to make those marks as well. I can't do that on camera because I need to use my ruler. So I'll do that while I'm off camera as well. So I've pressed and I've made those marks that I needed to make. So I drew the center line and then the two lines on either side of it. But first, what we need to do is top stitch the bottom and top edge of this pocket. So when we top stitch this top edge, that will close our opening that we left here, which is why we turned those edges under. And this is where you can decide what you want the top and bottom to be of your pocket. So I'm going to use the top where the edges aren't folded under. So you know how we had the opening that was this side. I'm going to use the opposite side as my top edge. I just like the way it looks better. It just looks a little bit cleaner to me. So now we need to take where we have those marks. So the marks here, and we're going to fold the slip pocket along those lines that we made. So along those marked lines from the center. So not the center mark, the one to the right of it right now is what I'm folding. And you can take this to your iron if you want and press it nice and flat, but I'm just pressing it with my hands right on that line. And then we're going to stitch this, so edge stitch it all the way down. You definitely want to make sure you trim the threads with this one. Because these will be seen. So there's one side. Pull that out of the way and folding the other line same way. So they're both going the same way. So you see how this one is like that. You want to make sure they're going the same way when you fold them. So I'm folding it right now so the side that was against my table is being put together. So the wrong side is what we'll call it for now. And I've got that folded again. So see how they're both folded the same way. And now I'm going to edge stitch that side. All the way down the entire length. Trim 
those threads, no peekaboo threads later. So right now you have a pocket that looks like this when you look at it. Now we need to take the lining. All oh, my pieces are falling. We need to take our lining and there's a mark that you need to make from the top down. And I know mine's really hard to see, but it is there. I used my chalk, my clover choco because I didn't want this to be seen later. So I used my clover choco to mark it, but it is there. And we're going to line up the center mark on our slip pocket with the center seam. So fold your lining in half, right sides together. And my center seam is already there because I've done this previously. Fold it in half, grab your pins, see a thread that needs to be trimmed. And then place that center seam, lining up the center on the slip pocket and also lining up the top edge of the slip pocket with that mark you made from the top down. So everything's gonna be lined up. Ooh, that pen, the pin is slightly bent. So I'm just going to pin this in place. I just grabbed the same pin. It's okay. And then I'm lining up the top edge. So over here at the corner. And I'm probably pacing, placing more pins than I need to at this moment, but I just want to make sure nothing shifts on me for this point in time. I'm not going to pin the bottom because what we're going to do now is we need to sew down this center line here. But when we get up to the top, we're going to create a little V at the top. So you're going to do it so it forms a V and that will make sure that these pockets don't droop when they're open. And there's a measurement for how far away from the center point these little marks will be. So stitching up the center, I'm just going to move this pin out of the way that I placed there, making sure everything stays lined up though. And really make sure you backstitch at the bottom here. And I'm just stitching directly on top of that center mark I made. And then I'm going to go up. And I'm just going to backstitch over this a couple times. There we go. And then pivot this and form the other side of the Y. And it just makes like a little Y at the top. You'll see here. I'll do it on the wrong side because it's easier to see. You get that little Y so that that prevents your pockets from drooping when we have them finish. Now what we need to do is take these pockets, so remove these pins that we've placed inside, and you're going to fold these where these pleats are to your center line. So that pleat that you made is going to meet the center line. So here's the pleat, here's my center line, so I'm folding it over to meet the center line. And I'll show you how it looks as soon as I get this all pinned. But you also want to make sure that your pocket doesn't go, it stays straight on that line that you drew from the top edge down. So see this pleat here? It comes over and there's that center line, you can see it there, and it touches that center line. And that's what you want to make sure it does. It touches the center line. So with the other side now, and the nice thing about it is your top stitching will line up when it's pushed over.
And again, making sure that the pocket, there's thread here that I thought I trimmed away, but obviously I didn't. So make sure your pocket top lines up with that mark you made from the top edge down of the lining panel. And now we're going to sew down the one side across the bottom, making sure these stay closed at the edge, at the bottom here. So see where these pleats come in and meet in the middle? You want them to be touching and you want to sew over that with them touching. And then you sew across, continue going across the bottom and up the other side. Getting all these threads. So I'm going to remove this pin and starting at the top here, moving. There we go. So down to the corner and you're going to sew across the bottom and you want to go right across that top stitching that you made earlier. So stitch right on top of it. If you're right beside it, that's okay. It'll just give it like a thicker looking line. Now at the bottom edge here, you can always back stitch over that bottom part of the pocket if you want for some extra security. which I may go back and do after. So I'm going to go back, as I mentioned, and I'm going to stitch back over that bottom edge of the pocket where that two pleats are. I don't know what's going on. All these threads keep popping up everywhere. So I'm just going to do it right here. Backstitch. And that's just some extra security at that pleat. Where those two pleats joined, I just gave some extra security. But see how the pocket is? How these two pleats, we folded them so they meet in the center. And then you have your two pockets. Now, I'm going to take this to my iron because I did use a heat pen and I'm going to erase all the marks that I made and I'm going to brush off the chalk as well. So I'll be right back. There we go. I've pressed those lines all away. We're good to continue on. So put this panel off to the side for now. We need to work on our zipper panels. So I'm just trying to grab them all. Everything's falling now because there's not so much left. So you're going to grab your main closure panel pieces. Those are piece M and you have the lining in the exterior and as well as your main zipper closure. This tape just loves to stick to me. So put the main zipper panel closures M off to the side for now. If you're working with your zipper tape that doesn't have any stops, we need to create stops. And even if you do, you need to fold back so that you don't sew over the stops. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the open end of the zipper. So open up your teeth just a little bit. And there's a measurement that we need to make from the top down. So I'm just going to go off camera here and make that mark because I didn't make it yet kind of hard to do it on this zipper. It's a, it doesn't mark very easy. And I just want to make sure when these close, yep, to the same height. So now that I have those marks made and it's hard to see on the zipper tape, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it at that mark you made. So just like that. So fold it so that the zipper tape goes wrong sides together then bring the folded edge so that it goes under your teeth. So you're turning the tape and I know it's hard to see. So there's the mark, I'm folding it back so that it goes back onto itself. So wrong sides together. 
just like that. Once I have that, I hold that edge and I bring this tape that's at the back around so that folded edge that I was hanging on to comes up and it goes under my zipper teeth. And I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel that shows this a little bit more in depth. And I'll link that below. You can just pause this video, open up another um, browser or another page and you can go ahead and watch that tutorial for a little bit more information on how to do this. It shows it a little bit more and explains it a bit more. So I've just added some pins and all we're doing here is uh, we're creating the stop. Don't poke yourself with the pins. We're creating the stop here at the top. So now what we need to do is we need to stitch over this. So I'm just going to hand crank first because I don't want to remove that pin because that pin is holding everything nicely in place for me. Once I get that stitched the first time, then I'll back stitch over it. And then I can come and sew this one. And then trim your threads. Once your threads are trimmed, the zipper tape that's sticking out the side, we want to trim that so it's even with the sides here of the zipper tape. Oh, wrong stitchers. Those are not my zipper stitch scissors. These are. Can I see a thread I need to cut? go. Now the other thing I'm going to do is stitch over the bottom edge of the tape so my zipper pull doesn't come off. Just like that. And now we have our zipper. So put that zipper to the side for now. Grab out your main zipper closure pieces. And I kind of fussy cut mine so I want to make sure they're lined up. So I sort of fussy cut mine so they'll show proper when the bag is closed. Flip them to the wrong side. And on the wrong side of the panels, there's some marks that you need to make from the wrong, from the short side over on your panels. And then we're going to take this to our iron and give it a press. And I'm going to actually use some water to hold it down so that they really stay really pressed. The other thing you can use is you can use some double-sided tape to hold these pressed edges over. So I'm going to take this to my iron, I'm going to press all these edges, and then when I come back, we will create the main zipper closure. Now those short edges are all pressed, and as I mentioned, I used a bit of water to really press them and get them nice and flat. Now, you may have used the same fabric for both your panels. However, I decided to use my exterior fabric for one and lining fabric for the other. I'm still going to follow the instructions as written in the pattern, but this is my exterior ones and this is my lining one. So starting with my lining one, which may be the same material for you, you've used them for exterior and lining, I'm going to take my zipper and place it so it is going to be right sides up on top of this panel, this M piece. Now, when you're placing this on here, you want to make sure you're placing it so the right side is going to be facing when it is placed together. So right now, this is the lining one. So the lining, when we close it, will be going this way, right? So you want to make sure you have it on the right side is what I'm trying to say of the panel, especially if you've fussy cut like I have. So right now I want this zipper to be in the middle of these two panels because they're fussy cut. So with the panel right side up and your zipper right side up, pin it in place. And there's a measurement for how far over from the short edge your zipper will go. So here's the short edge, how far over you will put your zipper. So start the zipper. So I've got it at that mark. My zipper teeth line up with that mark. And I'm just going to pin it all the way across this edge. And then I'm going to baste this in place all along the edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now I will have to change to my zipper foot, I think. So I'll do that right after. Oh. 
right after. What's going on here? It's caught on something underneath. The zipper tape got caught. Some threads. There we go. Let's try that again. So we're going to sew it all the way across the edge and I'm going to stop about halfway through that folded edge and then back stitch. Cut all your threads. Just like that. Now we're going to attach the other panel. So the other zipper right now to the panel. So you're going to place the zipper right sides together with the, what I'm calling my exterior panel. Clip the side edges together. And again, I had to be careful and make sure I was choosing the right side. If they end up not lining up, that's fine. It'll still look cute. Line up your side edges. So all of these side edges here, line them all up. So the folded edges will line up. And the side raw edges over here will line up. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I will need to switch to my zipper foot. And it's right here. All right, so with my zipper foot on, now what I'm going to do is sew up this short edge, stop when I get to the seam allowance that's given for here, turn and go all the way down this other edge. We're not stitching down this side, just this one short edge and the long edge, that's it. And you can open up your zipper and you can actually zip it completely out of the way because we did create a stop on that end. You can move this half of the zipper just like that. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And just check to see, like I'm doing, that you get to your seam allowance. And again, the nice thing is this, this interfacing that we've put here is kept out of the seam allowance, so you're not sewing through a lot of bulk. And if you're finding when you're sewing along that these folded edges aren't going to stay lined up anymore, just adjust them. You want everything to line up when it's finished. Now we need to take our scissors and we need to trim this corner here, but don't trim the zipper, just trim the corner. And then I trim going down. So I get rid of that bulk there. Now we need to turn this so they are right sides out. So push it right sides out. Use my turning tool to get that corner here poked out. And just be careful, don't push too hard. You don't want to push a hole. So I'm just pushing that corner out here, just getting it nice and flat. And then we need to take this to our iron and press. Now, I'm not going to do that just yet or top stitch. I'm going to wait until the other one here is sewn so that I can switch all my stitch length and get up because getting up and down is a little bit hard on me. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to stitch the other panel to this zipper 
before I top stitch everything. And you see how there's a thread coming through from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look in between the layers and see where it is and see if I can pull it back out, which I can see it here. And I just pulled it back out and it's gone. So I'm going to zip this closed and I'm going to repeat that whole process for the second side of the zipper. So again, with my zipper starting at that mark, and I'm going to leave my zipper open. Just trying to see if my microphone piece over there is still on. I get really nervous because this microphone dies without me knowing. All right, baste this together. And as I mentioned, what we're normally supposed to be doing is pressing the other one and then top stitching that side before we start on this one. Just to make it easier for me, I'm going to do all the stitching now and then come back, then go back to pressing and then, oops, top stitching after, ran out of bobbin thread. So I'm just going to pause the camera. I'm going to wind a bobbin really quick and then I'll be right back and continue on. So I changed my bobbin and then what I did was I just added the second side because I didn't feel like you needed to sit and watch me do that again as you were already watched me sew one side. And I gave it a press. So now we need to top stitch around all the edges. So you're going to top stitch down where the zipper is, up the short edge, across the side edge and down the other short edge. So I'm going to start on one short edge. And then I'm going to go across the edge where the zipper is. And if you're worried about angled stitches, again, take that one extra stitch length or one extra stitch, sorry. And there's my zipper pull. So I'm just going to slide it out of the way. trim all my threads and there's one side done. I went all the way around the entire panel. So down one short edge, across where the zipper is, up the other short edge and across the long raw edge. Repeat that for the second side. So I'm coming up this short edge here. And that's the edge that was folded. So when you're top stitching, you're actually stitching that top, that edge, the folded edge closed. And that's why it was folded under. So it gets closed and it doesn't have any raw edges on that side. That's how our panel looks. So remember I fussy cut mine so they would all line up. So it does, unfortunately you don't see his antlers here, but everything all lines up exactly like I wanted it to. So now I'm going to mark the center of this zipper panel. So the zipper closure. I'm just going to mark the center.
and I can actually see where I originally folded this. I had originally folded this to add my interfacing and I can still see the crease, which is kind of funny. So now we're going to grab the lining bottom with the zipper pocket and we're going to place it right sides up and we're going to place our zipper closure on top. So our main zipper closure and the pocket are going together right now and you want your zipper pocket to close in the same direction as your zipper main zipper closure so my zipper closure when it closes the zipper pull is going to the left so here i'm going to have it going to the left so i'm going to pin this together so pin it along the top edge here Then we're going to baste this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And it's okay if you're using a longer stitch length for this because it is basting it together. But don't forget to put your stitch length back to the length you use after you're done this so that when you're stitching the rest of the bag together, you're not using a top stitch length. So there it is, it's basted together. They both close in the same direction. I'm opening up that zipper pocket again, just to be safe and make sure I don't forget to do it when we go to do the final construction. Now we need to take one of our lining H top pieces and we need to place it so that it is going to be on top of this. So now what we need to do is take H and place it right sides, to, excuse me, right sides together. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze again right sides together on top of the lining and the main closure. So we're creating a main closure sandwich with the lining and the lining top. So pin it at the side edges. And then if you have your center mark, pin it at your center marks. I'm gonna leave that clip where it is for now. So pin my center marks. This just helps keep everything all nicely lined up. So now we're going to stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, make sure you're using your stitch length you use for stitching a bag together. I hit my speed, I think. all your threads and then we're going to press the lining top H up so you want the seam allowance to go towards the lining bottom so you're going to take this and flip it so you're pressing the lining top H up and then you're bringing the seam allowance down towards the lining bottom so see how you can see my seam allowance is going down towards the bottom here. It's going towards the zipper pocket. That's what you want. Then we're going to stitch this or top stitch this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you're stitching along the bottom edge here, along on top of the lining bottom. And just be careful if your zipper is really dangly that it doesn't get in the way. Trim your threads and there's your first side so far all sewn together. Now we need to repeat that for the second lining bottom and lining top. So second lining bottom right side up, the main zipper closure right sides up, lining up your center marks, 
So right now, the two linings are pretty sides touching. You're looking at the wrong side of the lining that we just attached to the top H piece. Sew this together with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm leaving it at my top stitch length because this is just a basting stitch. I'll return it back to its length when I've done this. There we go. Now we take lining H and place it so it is right sides down. And I fussy cut mine so they kind of can see the giraffes. Though it didn't really work on this one too well, but I fussy cut it so you could see the giraffe's faces. So I got to make sure that they're pointing up and they're not upside down. So the top H is going right sides together with the right side of the main zipper closure. We're creating a main zipper closure sandwich. So the lining and the bottom and lining top between it is the main zipper closure. Stitch these together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, press the lining top up and then bring that seam allowance down. You want the seam allowance to be pointing down towards the bottom. So right now, as I'm pressing it, I'm looking at both my lining panels. So I'm going to take this, roll this side up a little bit. And now I'm going to top stitch along the bottom here of this panel that I just attached my lining top to. Again, that seam allowance is being pressed towards the lining bottom. And just be careful with the dangly zipper pulls. You don't want to hit those. Some of them can dangle pretty far and you just don't wanna run it over, break a needle or damage your machine. There we go. That is how that is looking so far with our lining tops attached and our bottoms inside. Now we're going to finish the lining. What we need to do is tuck in this zipper. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pin it against the main zipper closure here. And we're going to pin these together. So just like we did with the exterior, make sure where the tops meet, you line up those seams. So it looks like one continuous seam. So line those up. Line up your side seams. Put them all the way down. I'm also going to line up my bottoms, line up the center marks. Might as well just pin everything now. Line up those side seams again where the top meets the bottom lining, the lining bottoms. So it's one continuous seam. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the sides of the bag, of the lining, 
using the seam allowance given in the pattern. However, you'll want to pay attention to what the seam allowance is because it does change for the sides. All right, so now I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to sew those sides. Now remember, pay attention to the seam allowances because it does change for the sides. Starting at the top back stitch, and then continue sewing down the side. other side. Now when I'm on this side, this is where that zipper tail is. I'm just making sure it's staying in place so that I don't accidentally sew over it. Now we're going to sew the bottom and I've already got mine pinned so we're going to sew the bottom with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And what I'm going to do before we press those seams open, I'm going to trim my seam allowances down a little bit because that's a lot of bulk there that I don't want in the bag. And you could take this to your iron and press the seams open. I'm just going to finger press them. And then I'll show you what else I do with my seams. So there we go trim any threads. All right, so I'm going to finger press these seams open, but the other thing I'm going to do is I like to top stitch or base stitch those seams open. So I put it on my machine and I base stitch them so they stay open. And I'm going to turn this so I can get the bag to open wide. So what I mean by that is I've got the seam pressed open, I have it on my machine, and at the top I just baste across and I back stitch over it so that it holds that seam open like that. And I do that where all the seams are that need to be pressed open. Now this one at the bottom, you don't need to do that because that's going to be held open when we go to box those corners, but at the top here, I'm going to baste it to keep it closed. Or to keep it open, sorry, not closed, open. Sorry for the confusion. So I'm going to continue to press the seams with my fingers just to get them to stay open. at least near the bottoms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the corners and we're going to box them just like we did with the exterior. So with these seams pressed open here, again, press those seams open, line them up, And I don't have to worry about reaching in and pressing like I did with the exterior because I can feel this fabric, it's thinner, there's no foam there and all vinyl and everything. It's just the two layers here, well, the two layers and the interfacing. And then I'm going to sew across this corner using the seam allowance given in the pattern, back stitching at start and stop. Make sure those seams stay open. There's one side. Now I'm going to work on the other side. So pressing those seams open. The 
this way here, they lay nice and flat. You know what, I don't even need to pin the rest of the way because that stays nice. going to finish pressing this open. Sorry, I just don't want to get up anymore. It's starting to make me really sore. So I'm just finger pressing these open rather than pressing it with my iron, but you can you could have taken this to your iron and pressed it. All right, now the seam allowances I've already trimmed, but you can trim them now if you haven't. Now we need to finish the exterior and lining, and this is our final assembly. So with your exterior or your lining wrong sides out, make sure everything is all unzipped, your main zipper closure and your zipper pocket. You're going to place the lining, the, the main zip, the main, the exterior, sorry, I was trying to think of the word, inside the bag. Now, I like to wear my bag so the zipper closes in front of me. So this is the front of my bag. And what I'm going to do is just place my zipper, my lining inside right now so that they're wrong sides together. So see where my zipper is closing over here? So when I wear my bag, here's the front, I wear it on my right side. I want the zipper to be closing this way so I can access it easily. So I need to know that because I'm going to end up having, unfortunately, that zipper pocket at the front. But you can have it so that the zipper pocket is at the back if you prefer. I'm going to have it so that it's at the front because that's where I like my zipper pocket or my zipper to close is towards me when I wear my bags. And I'm thinking I'm keeping this one for myself. Haven't decided yet. So you want to line up your side seams. So these side seams here, you're going to line them up, pin them in place. Make sure your zipper panel is not in the way. And I need to move this zipper, this clip out of the way. So make sure the zipper panel stays tucked down. Line up your side seams here. So these side seams, line them up. And if you want your top exterior seams there, you can also base those so that they're open, they stay open for you. Now, I don't have a center mark on my exterior, that's okay, I'm just going to pin it. Make sure your handles are tucked down inside so that you don't clip them in the way. You don't want to sew over them. everything nice and flat as you're pinning. So everything's all lined up at the top here. Everything's nice and flat as I'm pinning. And now we're going to stitch around that whole edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So make sure you got your stitch length at the length you like to use for stitching your bag together. Sorry, I just wanted to take a drink. And now we're going to stitch all the way around that pinned edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. 
And you know what? I'm going to use my extension table because my hands are already really sore. And the less work I have to do with my hands, the better. The less work out for them. This will help hold the bag up for me. And I'm going to pivot the camera a bit just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more. Make sure I didn't change the focus. There we go. Now we're ready. Okay. So I have my bag on my machine under my presser foot. So I know it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the presser foot here. And I'm going to stitch all the way around and I'm inside my bag right now. Now that's because I don't have a free arm on my machine. So I have to stitch this way. If you have a free arm, you can stitch it the way you normally would. And don't be afraid to squish the bag as you're going around. We're going to give it a really good press when we're done. Keep those seams opened. Sorry, I know the bag is sticking up. It's hard to see what I'm doing. But I'm just stitching all the way around, going with the seam allowance. And I'm just gonna make sure that this seam stays open. And I'm coming back around to where I started. table for now. Now I'm going to first check my bobbin, make sure I have enough to do the top stitching, which I do, because that's going to be our next thing after we get the bag all turned out. But now we're going to trim the seam allowance. Now, sometimes I don't trim the seam allowance because I like how it adds that extra at the top, but we're just trimming it down. quite the workout for my hand. There we go. So I've got my seam allowance trimmed down. Throw that in the trash. Now we need to turn the bag right sides out through the opening very carefully. And it's a pretty big opening, so Should be able to do this. There is our bag so far. Now, because I don't have a free arm on my machine, I can't tuck my exterior my lining into my exterior just yet. I need to first sew top stitch the bag, so I'm going to push my exterior inside my lining for now. And I'm not closing my opening in my pockets just yet, just because um, when I go to turn my exterior back right sides out, I can reach through the pocket and I can then go ahead and fix everything through the pocket. So I'm just making sure my exterior is pulled up and making sure everything is nice and flat. So the exterior top H, the lining top H is what you want pushed up right now. And 
where these seams are, if you can flatten them, that'll also help with the top stitching. Sometimes I've taken a hammer and I flatten it with a hammer, but right now I'm just pushing it down with my thumb against my table. Handles it inside the bag. So I'm going to add some clips all the way around because as I mentioned previously, I'm using a vinyl, so I can't actually iron on the exterior. So I'm just clipping so that everything gets held in place. Again, make sure your closure is not in the way and your handles. If you can, you can take this to your iron and give it a press instead of using clips like I am. Sometimes I still press and I use clips. Speaking of clips, that one's staying on the floor until I'm done. Unless I'm going to run over it. No, it's by my drinks. Now again, I need my extension table. And we're going to top stitch the entire opening of the bag, making sure your handles are pointing in, uh, down or into the bag, depending on which way you're top stitching this. And your main zipper closure is not in the way as well. And I like to start on a side seam just so that it is hidden in the seams. Why isn't this staying down? There we go. Just so that the top stitching isn't on the front or the back, right at the back of the bag, it's at the side seam. And if you don't want back stitching on your bag, what you can do is leave long thread tails and tie them off. I keep going to reach for my knee lift because I have a knee lift on my other machine and I keep going to reach for it here. So back stitch it start and stop and then top stitch the entire way around. Again I'm keeping my handles out of the way here. Now, you're going to add another row of stitching after this. It is purely decorative, but it does add a nice little touch. Ow. Again, make sure your main zipper closure is not in the way as you're stitching around. If you need to use a humper jumper, use a humper jumper to get over the side seams if you're finding they're too bulky or like I mentioned you can use a hammer to flatten them you'll want to do that obviously before you start sewing wouldn't it be awesome if there was some kind of like press that you could just do that could just press the seams flat like that. I mean, I know there's irons, but like, like your rivet press that could just like sort of hammer the seams flat. But instead of hammering, you just press with a press. I'm sure my neighbors would appreciate that instead. So I'm done one round of top stitching and I've just pulled it off my machine and I went with long tails so I can cut them really close. There we go. Now I'm going to do the second row of stitching and I'm starting exactly where I started the last time just to keep it in the same area, that back stitching. And just stitch all the way around. And it's nice because this stitching will also match the stitching on our handles. 
because remember we did the two rows of stitching. So this stitching will match the decorative stitching on our handles too. I keep thinking I'm running out of bobbin, but I'm not. Again, my main zipper closure is pointing up. I've got to get it down. Handles out of the way. Almost done. There we go. Trim my threads. Now another extra little piece of security that you could do is add some fray stop or fray check where you backstitch and that way there that'll help with the backstitching area. So it's all backstitched. Now I've got to pull my exterior out of my lining. And I'm going to reach in through my pocket and I'm just going to make sure my corners of my exterior are pushed out well. Then I'm going to push my lining in. It fits so beautifully. Oh my gosh, I love looking inside and how like, happy and bright it looks. I may need more of this fabric. Provided I can find it. So far that's how it's looking. Now we need to pull the lining out, the lining pocket, sorry, out. And we need to stitch this opening closed. So stitch all the way across that opening to close the zipper pocket opening. And after this we have one last thing to do and then our bag is complete. push the pocket into the bag, get the corners pushed in. There we go. This may need some adjustment for your lining, which mine does now. And see, when I wear it on my shoulder, the bag closes to the front exactly like I like. Now pull your zipper end out. And if you want, you can trim it. She has a measurement given in the pattern for how far to trim, but I like a longer zipper tail, so I'm leaving mine how it is. I'm not going to trim it. I need some tools because we're going to now install a zipper end. And yours may look a little bit different than mine, but what you do is you fold these two ends under. So the zipper, you're going to fold it back onto itself. So you're covering the back end of the zipper.
just like that. I'm going to grab out one of my zipper ends and a screw. like to add a little bit of glue into the zipper end first and that's just extra security in case the screw ever comes out you don't lose it and I've tried to actually take these off just to test it to see after the glue has dried I've taken the screw off and then tried to pull it off and I couldn't get it off so it does work so now you're going to insert the end of your zipper tape into the opening of the metal zipper end. So push it all the way in and you can use your screwdriver to help push it down if you need to. So like I just did there. There we go. Now take the screw and you're going to screw this in trying to do this so you can see. So here's my little screw right here. It's really little. And then screw this in and don't have this against your hand when you're screwing this in. Have it so it's against the table. wasn't using the right size screwdriver. There we have it. We now have our zipper end all installed. So you can see it's on both sides. And again, I added that glue and I do find it actually helps. So it is good to have the glue so that it can help Hold the zipper on in case that little screw does end up falling off. So I'm just closing all my pockets up, zipping my zipper up. Now I will give this a really good press once we're done here and it'll press it really nice. But look at how beautiful this is. I love the design. I love these pockets. It'll fit a phone perfectly in here. My phone is charging so I can't unplug it to show you unfortunately but you have lots of pockets, lots of great ways to stay organized. You could use this for you know, any bag, an overnight bag, a gym bag, anything you want, a beach bag even. It's a great size. I like it for a purse actually. It's kind of funny. That's the size I would actually like. So there it is. Your Minerva tote is completed. We have assembled the whole bag. Now it is ready to take it out and show it off to the world. But before you do, don't forget to take lots of photos and post them on social media so we can all see them. And use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that it's easy to find your bag. I really do hope you enjoyed sewing this bag and sewing along with me and picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for sewing with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye and happy sewing.